Hello my lovies, welcome back to another video. I'm Rebecca Markel and today I would like to do another reaction video to a particular video on the science of being transgender. I've never seen this video before and I don't know what to expect but I'm hoping that it's going to be informative and helpful and maybe even shed some light on the mind of being transgender. I'm hoping that it might help those who feel like that biology isn't just what defines us but it's also in the mind and how gender and sex are separate things. So for those who don't know, sex is separate from gender. Some studies have shown that with brain activity between transgender women and cisgender women that the activities are very similar, have very similar patterns and whilst with transgender men and cisgender men that similar patterns have also occurred and through these studies evidence has supported that gender is determined by the brain and not by our biology. So without further ado let's see what this video is about. The video is by ASAP Science and was made about three years ago almost exactly about a month off actually but hey uh, so hopefully it'll be pretty up to date so let's find out there's a lot of misinformation out there about what it means to be transgender, but recently scientists have begun to look more closely into the neurology, physiology, and psychology behind it. So today we're going to break down what science does know in a respectful and educational way. Hey guys, I'm Gigi Gorgeous and today I'm here with ASAP Science to break down the science of being transgender. Before we get too deep into it, we have to look at your genetic sex or the chromosomes you have. These were determined right at fertilization when the sperm cell from your father, which carries an X or a Y chromosome, fused with the egg from your mother, which carries an X chromosome. But until six or seven weeks after fertilization, both XY and XX embryos have identical gonads. Around seven weeks, the male sex organs start to develop because of a gene on the Y chromosome called SRY. It causes cells to become more specialized, and these cells create testosterone, which in turn triggers the development of structures like the penis and scrotum, while other cells block female development by degenerating the female ducts. However, in female development, because there is no Y chromosome with the SRY gene, these ducts stay intact and become the uterus, cervix, upper vagina, and the oviduct, with the help of estrogen and chemicals secreted by the early kidney. But it's not always that simple. So already we started going into the biology of things so I'm hoping uh, that we actually do go further in depth with this uh, as it sounds like it is just suggesting that it's going to be doing so um, but yes I forget I think it is important that we do talk about the biology of things because yeah we can't ignore the biology of things still but this is determining our sex right now um, but it's not always as simple as that there are sometimes even rare combinations like XXY, XXX, XXYY, etc. And even people with XX chromosomes that develop male genitals and characteristics due to a piece of the Y chromosome breaking off and switching places to an X chromosome. But sexual differentiation in the brain actually happens much later than gonadal differentiation. And yes, although controversial, male and female brains have structural and functional differences between each other. Studies have found that males generally have So already we're actually talking about the, the brains themselves, uh, which I was just saying earlier, is that the brains are actually function, they actually function slightly differently with the brain activity between females and males. And this is where it starts to get a bit interesting um, because, yeah, gender is likely to be determined by our brains and not just by our biology. We have a larger cerebrum, cerebellum, and hippocampus, while females have higher density left frontal lobes and larger volumes in the right frontal lobes. So what exactly do we see when we look at the brain of a transgender person? Several studies have shown that transgender brains are both structurally and functionally more similar to their experienced gender identity than their biological sex. One study found that trans women who, despite being assigned male at birth, had a smaller female-sized structure in the hypothalamus. MRI scans also show the brain structures of trans people to be more similar in thickness to their experienced gender and not their sex. 
Finally, the pheromone androstadienone causes different hypothalamic responses in male and female brains. And when individuals with gender dysphoria were exposed to it, the hypothalamic response matched their perceived gender rather than their sex. These studies help to highlight how masculinization or feminization of the gonads is not always the same as the brain, and that there's a difference between your sex or your anatomy and your gender or how we perceive our own body. Ta-da! <laughs> but yeah, that's literally what I was saying, is that yeah, your gender is literally more likely determined by what's going on in your brain than what is actually happening with what you're bio biologically uh, given at birth. And yeah, I, I, I don't really know if there's much I could further in depth say to this because this is pretty much what I know and yeah, studies have shown this. So when people try to argue science with you about oh well biology determines this and you can't just change this what well science says <laughs> this so what's your point like people try to use biology and science and and try to argue that you you can't be transgender and stuff like that is that it's wrong it's like well we've used science to prove you wrong but you still don't like it so you're just being transphobic at this point <laughs> There also seems to be a genetic component to transgender identity. Looking at family histories, gender identity incongruence seems to run in the family, meaning they may be inherited. The CYP17 gene, which controls the body's level of sex hormones, has a changed allele that is expressed frequently in trans men. Okay, so this is interesting because um, no one as of yet that I'm aware of has ever been transgender. Um, and up until very recently, but I don't think it's within my right to say, um, but as far as I'm aware is that I'm the first one to actually come out as transgender. But yeah, I have no idea if it, there is definite like uh, evidence to suggest this because I suppose um, on my paternal side, uh, there's a bit of a sense of ego and pride, I'd say, maybe, and it's kind of been, maybe in a sense, conservative, but supportive. I don't know, it's really hard to say on this one because, like, I have a very supportive, loving family. But I think there is a sense of potential pride in themselves and just there is no other way kind of thing. I don't know. It's very hard to explain this one without trying to sound horrible or anything like that because I have nothing horrible to say, but it's just like, yeah. But yeah, I, I am the first one as far as I'm aware to have basically uh, come out as transgender and someone has followed suit but again i don't think it's really within my my right to say who why or what because it's up to them Although more research could be done, scientists are currently looking at over 3 million DNA markers for transgender identity to investigate any genetic link for being trans. Even though scientific studies validate the experience of transgender people, they're still suffering from more depression and anxiety than the general public. The risk of suicide is more prominent in transgender people who have been rejected by their family, discriminated in the workplace, or in healthcare. Suicide risks seem to decrease after gender transitioning, suggesting that gender dysphoria can cause an extreme amount of emotional pain. So I just want to say that yes, that suicidal ideation tends, it usually drops uh, after having uh, transition uh, opportunities and actually getting to transition. Um, but then you have the social construct of things where people don't accept you and still make you feel at your lowest and then people question like well if you're still suicidal then then being transgender is just not a thing but in actuality it's the actual society bringing them down 
and trying to cause issues for them that people struggle um, and that's something that needs to be changed is that social is that the social construct and social expectations needs to change so that people can feel more comfortable to be themselves and to grow but because people don't do that or uh, there are a lot of people that don't let them do that should I say it it makes it hard and yeah so that is pretty much a good uh, hitting the, the nail on the head kind of thing. Uh, it explains the mind of gender and how it works and what goes on. And yeah, I hope this can be of some sort of educational value. The actual video is by ASAP Science, so if you do want to check out the video, then then I shall leave a link in the description below so you can check the video out and also check out the rest of their content. But yeah, I just want to further clarify that just because someone doesn't fit in what your social norm is doesn't give people the right to act so discriminately and... discriminatively? Discriminately? Future me, can you help me out with that one? <laughs> then acting on these prejudices of what you feel like a social norm is isn't fair and it doesn't allow people to grow it makes people very uncomfortable and actually makes life so much harder uh, and causes more mental problems so being an accepting person and understanding how uh, gender dysphoria affects people and how gender works in the brain is not it's not just biology, there's so much more. We are human beings, we're far more complex than you will ever get to understand, even why the most top scientists will ever understand. We are complex beings. Anyway, I think I'm going to end this video off here. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Damn it, I did it again. I try not to say that. <laughs> give it a like. Otherwise, I've been Rebecca Markelf, and I shall see you in the next episode. Take care of yourself. I don't know how to make this unblurry because I'm not close to the camera. I'm sorry, somebody help me. <laughs> I'll just do it for me. Take care of yourself.